Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. Obviously, this is a, a very important uh, time for us to continue these discussions. And we know that the Federal Reserve plays an important role in helping our monetary policy. Uh, I want to just reinforce for all the comments that have been said about small business lending uh, and the, the reaction that they're getting from a lot of banks locally. And uh, we again need to get the Federal Reserve and the FDIC to get this straightened out because a year and a half of conversations with Sheila Bear and a lot of others with good intentions of saying the right things here in Washington are still not translating in many ways to local communities where small businesses, which are the lifeblood of our community, are having difficult times with small business loans. I don't mean SBA loans, but just general small business loans of, of getting those uh, accomplished. An area that I want to have some conversation with you, though, is there's a continuing discussion since many of us believe that in order to have a competitive banking system that you have lots of choices. And there's been a big concern about consolidation of the largest banks through acquisition and a lot of other things, and that the role of smaller banks in this, in regional banks, and that the policies over the last number of year, years have uh, squeezed smaller banks because of access to, you know, very, either no interest or very low interest for larger banks and smaller banks not getting that access to that. We, we tried through this, uh, the House, already tried to take some money, put it aside, and incentivize small business lending through smaller banks. Can you give us some specific ideas of what we can do to help the competition or the availability of, of credit and, and cash to the banks so they can have more availability uh, to make lending uh, available to small businesses? Well, just first on the competition issue, um, the Federal Reserve is charged with making sure the co competition is adequate whenever we approve a merger, for example. And our approach has been to look at local banking areas and to make sure that retail customers have plenty of choices in terms of their local banking services or that small businesses have adequate choices in terms of their uh, borrowing. Um, so we, we do pay attention to that. And the financial reform bill includes additional restraints on the share of total liabilities that any large firm can have. So there are some things in place to, to address the competition issues. And indeed, I think during this crisis, actually, it's been quite interesting that where a number of the larger banks, because of their various problems, have pulled back to some extent, particularly in smaller communities, small banks have, have stepped up and have made more loans. And if, if they have, if they have a the balance capital. sheet available to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And that's where the ne necessity of giving them at least equal access to low interest cash to make loans. Well, so, so in terms of the access, uh, well, we, of course, uh, we had a, a, an attempted policy, the TARP policy, which had, did put capital into banks of all sizes. That has been a stigmatized policy. It's not been as effective for that reason. Uh, in terms of the funding from the Federal Reserve, we, we loan to all banks, directly or indirectly, at the same interest rate. Um, so the, the low-cost funds that are available to large banks are also available to, to smaller banks. I think that from Congress's point of view, um, there's some individual programs that could be done, and those include some of the things that you're talking about now to encourage small business lending, for example. The other thing which I'm sure you hear is that, is that small banks complain all the time about regulatory burden. And there are some elements of the financial reform bill, but just more broadly, I think it is important to recognize that small banks find it much more difficult to comply with complex regulations, and where possible, we need to simplify or reduce those burdens for the smaller banks. Well, I agree, and I'm not here to say that we want banks of any size to be making anything other than prudent loans. Sure. Obviously, there were pendulum swings here, and now it's become very difficult. But I, I just, over and over, I just keep hearing from business people and from banks that you know, $200,000 loans, $100,000 loans, a million dollar loans just hard to come by. And by the way, there are large banks in, in, I can just speak for South Florida, that are basically saying, no, if you don't do this, this, and this, we're not going to lend to you. And they have, there are very few choices out there. So I, I believe very strongly in the vibrancy of large, medium, regional, small uh, opportunities. And you know, there, it has it not played out that way in an effective way. So we need more initiative, more activity, more suggestions come in the Federal Reserve. If you can take it upon yourself through the Reserve, or to talk to Congress and talk to the public. I appreciate the small business meetings around the country, but again, we're just not seeing the, the necessary reaction. We'll continue to do that, but I'd just point out that, that a lot what you were just describing in many cases is the bank's own decision about what kind of loans they want to make and not the examiner's uh, constraining them. No, I, I, I acknowledge that, but I, again, there, there's a lot of difficulty, and you said the human factor, who wants to be the, the examiner to, to be the last one to sign off in the next bank who fails? I get that. But again, I think there's way too much of 
that one side. I think we need to come back to the middle, and a strong message needs to be delivered. Thank you. Yep.